Any views or opinions expressed on KUR are not necessarily those of Kutztown University, Kutztown University Student Government, Kutztown University Student Services Incorporated, KUR staff and management or other affiliated organizations. This is Kutztown Live. Kutztown University's Campus and Community Issues Talk Radio Magazine. You can listen back to any of our episodes of Kutztown Live by going to Spotify and searching Kutztown University Radio. And now, your hosts of Kutztown Live. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Welcome back to Kutztown Live. I'm your host, as always, DJ Aaron B., and with me today, I have Donovan Levine from the Keystone Newspaper. How are you doing today, Donovan? Doing well. How about you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Now, can you tell me a little bit more about what the Keystone does? So the Keystone's a student-run organization. So we do the news and journalism on campus. It's like we're separate from like other posts like the Daily Brief and other things like that because those are like faculty-run. Um, our Newspapers split into like four sections. So we have um, free form and opinion. We have news. We have A and E, which is arts and entertainment, and we have sports. So like those are like the four main sections that we do. And we have four main writers that head those sections. And then we have other positions from like social media to photography. And our writers kind of recruit um, other people interested in journalism or publishing their stories. They send it to us, and then we just publish it online and do all the editing and things like that very nice you know you just you just said something about recruitment and uh last week was mm -hmm. the uh the involvement fair and mm -hmm. kur is all too familiar with that how'd you guys do we did all right we got about like half a sheet filled on our um, on our papers i mean we, we did we did some recruitment mm -hmm. so that's good so it goes yeah yeah the involvement fair it's a good time to get in touch with students very much so yeah uh, now, can you tell me like a little bit more about like specific stories that you've run, like mm -hmm. just just to give the, the listeners a general idea of what kind of stories you guys do run with? Um, so we do a lot of local stories. Um, I personally just wrote a story on um, Spuds. The you know I love Spuds. I'm yeah, gonna miss it. I miss Spuds <laughs> so much, but um, you know, unfortunately, because of like plumbing issues from like the people who live above them, like all of their um, like. Eh, what's it called like kitchen machinery was mm -hmm. damaged and everything so like for like obvious obvious sanitary reasons they like had to close so i wrote about that recently and just kind of like local things like that that happen on campus you know the new um parking meters that are like in between where like the new mexican restaurant is and the um, like cd like store I forget, oh yeah I forget the name ones. of it but there's young that's ones what it, that's yeah. what it is and there's like new parking meters there someone mm -hmm. wrote an article on that it's just kind of like local news like that um we talk about um like if there's like an ensemble or like other mm -hmm. concerts going on we do like reviews on that um, art galleries and exhibitions um we talk about like you know sports and everything we interview some of the players after like their games like mm -hmm. i just interviewed the basketball team after their win against uh bloomsburg on wednesday um and you know just basic things like that my section's more free form which you can kind of write opinions on anything like you could do like um movie reviews you can do um just kind of like an opinion on like um hey here's like five ways to like study better or like hey here's like 10 ways or 10 things you can do during the spring um i recently wrote one on like the 2010s like as a decade just oh, doing, nice. like, doing a review about everything that happens i love so. the decade in review things <laughs> yeah i love those too so um i wrote one of those um it's basically like free free reign because it's like opinion based articles mm -hmm. so it's that kind of thing you know what was funny you you were, you were mentioning it early into answering the question and uh the spuds thing and the parking meter thing were two things we talked about on kutztown live last semester really but yeah yeah uh josh uh, my co-host and i josh uh we we made sure to we, we thought they were important enough we thought mm -hmm. we thought the town listeners deserved to hear them mm -hmm. and you and i were talking about this a little uh bit before the show um you know as the world transitions to online news from paper news how is the keystone adapted to that so it's been kind of a struggle mostly because we had like a high turnover rate you know i won't get into like any of the drama or anything but like there was like a lot of people who did leave last semester and for like tech technical reasons we did have to switch to online from print and everything which is good because we're getting with the times and everything mm -hmm. but i just feel like where we were as a student-run paper you know we kind of almost weren't ready for it quite yet because we were into the routine and into the system of doing print 
and now like online it's like so how do we like work around deadlines how do we like get more involved you know we were having issues with like because it's all run on like wordpress and things like that we're having issues like running ads on there which is how we how we make money because like mm -hmm. on the newspaper what would happen is that like um organizations or businesses in town would like send us ads or graphics and then we would put them into the paper and then that's kind of how we would get funded basically mm -hmm. um but now that we're not doing the newspaper anymore they don't send us those ads anymore so it would work if we put them online but we're having difficulties do that for like some like contract agreement mm -hmm. with wordpress so we have to fix that and um i mean as far as like the actual like running articles online it's mostly having a social media presence to like share those articles with the world because mm -hmm. i don't really know how many people really um look at our website too much so i mean getting more people involved and getting more people reading like active stories and like you know sharing because like if you go on like facebook or twitter like you see people share like news articles all the time all the but time. It's, but it's like you know it's mostly like you know nbc or it's like you know like a whole like a whole bunch of other like journalist websites but it's not like the local ones unless it's like mm -hmm. the reading eagle you know but the keystone's out there and like we're publishing we're trying to publish like one to two a day oh so, good. just yeah. like putting one or two articles on the website a day that's that's our plan going forward we'll see how it goes because i mean like we're all students like we're all busy oh, yeah. so it's like you know it's being able to do that kind of thing has been the struggle but uh, we're, mm -hmm. we're working towards it now donovan you you and i've the we've been discussing this and we want to make this more of like a weekly bi-weekly segment here on Cutstown Live where we have you guys from the Keystone uh -huh. come on and talk a little bit, give an update on how the Keystone's doing that week, like what's going on. So this is the first week of that, I guess. <laughs> now yep. you can you can take it from here. You can shoot. What do you guys have going on at the Keystone this week that you'd like to talk about? Um, so one story in particular I was working on, um, Cassidy Pizer, if I said her name right, um, is um she's part of um a developing story where she's um suing Kutztown over religious discrimination so um from what i understand of the story from what was published on other articles um her roommate had said like some like i want to say anti-semitic comments towards her um was like sharing like pictures to her that like she felt were offensive um uh she broke i believe it's called a mezuzah it's like um it's like a scroll like a like a mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not like too big on jewish culture like i'm kind of like you know she she broke her important religious uh, that uh, yeah object to her right yeah yeah we'll say we'll say that um basically just being like an awful person towards her mm -hmm. solely because she was a jewish student um and so what happened is that she went up to like her cas and things like that and uh like on campus authorities public safety i believe and they hadn't done anything mm -hmm. about it um and so she sued the school for that and so um i've been trying to get in touch with her recently um and i know a whole bunch of other um journalists papers like times of israel the jerusalem post um the daily Be uh yeah the daily beast i believe like they're all like running stories on on those, her. those are pretty big sites they are because it's, <laughs> it, it directly impacts the jewish community mm -hmm. and it's kind of like it's kind of interesting to like see kutztown in there because like you wouldn't think of that at all but i mean that's a developing story we're working on there's a few other things um i wanted to get something written up on it's kind of older news but the new tobacco law um mm -hmm. i know definitely is affecting some students because like oh know, certainly yeah, yeah because i mean anyone who's 18 to 20 now like they can't they can't buy cigarettes now and, i mean i feel like that was half this campus <laughs> that, I feel is, like, that I feel, is half this campus yeah yeah i feel like most most of the people i just know here in general they mm -hmm. they vape in some way they yeah smoke. exactly so um i know i know that's a big thing i mean th th this is just my opinion i wouldn't really put this well i could put this in an opinion article but i mean like, mm -hmm. i feel like you, you know i mean like if you're old enough to like you know serve and like die for your country you know you should be old enough to smoke a cig or drink <laughs> alcohol <laughs> that's you know? definitely the best argument i've seen and i th i've seen that argument used like with the drinking age I've, as well yeah as well I've, i also believe the drinking age should be either make the drinking age 18 or keep it at 21 but make selective service at 21 yeah you know what i mean like i like one or the other but like the way it is now i just don't really know if i understand it uh-huh oh, you know? i, I agree totally if they're thinking about our safety you know if mm -hmm. the safety factor is why they're like pushing the age of drinking and pushing the age of tobacco well i think war is more dangerous than both of those things and there's plenty of other th things that we are unsafe from that the government is not helping us <laughs> I, would, I would agree with that than uh, smoking a cigarette 
Um, there are a few other stories. Um, I know at Vantage Point, um, there have been some complaints about people living there. Mm -hmm. So we were going to see if we can get some stories covered on that. Um, there's the coronavirus outbreak um, we were thinking about. There are there's some new clubs on campus, uh, Drone Club. Drone Club. If you heard yep. about that. One of our KUR members is in it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So um, there's going to be an article written on that. Um, a few sports things. Uh, women's bowling is coming up. Um, there's some softball games, wrestling matches. Um, oh, yeah, uh, the new esports room in the yes, MSU. Yes, that is a crazy looking room <laughs> oh my god it's radical i love that room um so i, I work in the msu so i like mm -hmm. pass by like every day and it's like it's just it's incredible like like not just how it was renovated but mm -hmm. like how fast it was renovated because i was here during the it's winter just popped out of nowhere <laughs> yeah exactly like it, it took them just one winter to like make that room which was usually used for like admissions or like tours and stuff like that mm -hmm. and it would be like a presentational room and they would just like have people like sit down and just like look at this like boring like PowerPoint that was mm -hmm. on just like a regular projector. But now there's like, you know, desks with computers and like gamer chairs and like these like high powered like modems and stuff. And mm -hmm. like they got like the lighting on the wall. It's like, very impressive. It's very there. impressive. I yeah. don't know how big you are into video games or anything. But I personally am not, but okay. I mean, there, there's a spot in Philly that's just like a big uh, mm -hmm. gaming place like that. And I swear that room looks like it was modeled after it just really the beautiful setups, the big TV on the wall. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And <laughs> they redid the carpeting too. They repainted the walls, you know, for like, cause when I was working here over the uh, winter break, the like entire and the entire first floor of the embassy you smelled like burnt rubber. <laughs> so it was just like, I was like, how long is this going to take? But they got it done before everyone came back from, from break. And I was like, oh, look at that. You know, it, was just, it definitely surprised me when I first walked in. Yeah, it's really impressive. So that was that was another thing. They're going to be having tournaments at some point, I believe, if they haven't already. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to get, like, maybe some people in the esports club to just kind of, like, talk about it, do, like, um, you know, like an interview or profile, just write about it themselves. Anything like that we were thinking about. But... Um, and then also like music and um, you know bands on campus, maybe like some ensembles we could cover, things like that. Um, as far as like breaking news, there isn't too much um, other than what was already mentioned. So, but that's like most of what we cover is like you know we bo we do both local and um, you know like things happening in the world. Of course, yeah. Well, Donovan, I want to thank you so much for coming on this week. I'm really looking forward to doing this more with you guys. It's my Keystone. pleasure. Well, make sure you keep it right here with us on Kutztown Live for some local, national, and international news. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. We'll see you right Programming up. Programming on KUR provided in part by the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce, 610-683-8860. Checking campus headlines, Kutztown University may soon have a one-stop visitor center. The university is planning to renovate the Poplar House, reports the Keystone News, in the near future to resolve the issue of not having such a center. Currently, when visitors and prospective students need to get information about where things are and other information on campus, they have to go to various locations around campus, but the Poplar House would be used as a one-stop center. The Poplar House is located at the corner of College Boulevard and Main Street. Its historic structure has stood at the university corner there for many, many years, but right now does not serve as anything more than storage, but that hopefully will soon change with some funding from PASHI and other sources. If everything goes as planned, the Poplar House may be seeing renovations within the next couple of years. We check news about hourly here on your news leader here in Northeastern Berks County, KUR Kutztown. I'm so glad we left that stupid party. No joke. Hey, baby, are you an overdue library book? Because you got fine written all over you. Oh, barf. <laughs> what about that girl with the hoop earring? Ridiculous. When she was dancing... Megan, I'm look out! Look out! Oh, oh. oh my God, Becky. Becky, are you okay? My arm. I think it's broken. Can you bend it? It's already bent in the wrong direction. I can't believe this. I'm so sorry. I only had a few drinks. I was just buzzed. Really? Just buzzed? Yeah, I swear. Well, in that case, my arm is fine. Ah, that's better. You're really okay? You're serious, Becky? No, genius. I'm not serious. Ow! My arm, it hurts. Buzzed driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. 
Buzz driving is drunk driving. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, the Ad Council, and this station. This is Officer Reyes from Reading Police Department. If you have your wipers on due to inclement weather, you must turn on your headlights. If you don't follow this law, you could be fine. So remember, wipers on, headlights on. It's the law. To learn more about traffic safety, visit JustDrivePA.com. Brought to you by PennDOT and this station. Welcome back to Kutztown Live. I'm your host, DJ Aaron B., joined by my co-host, Josh, that's me. That's you. On I, again after a week. I haven't said that in a while. You haven't. You you missed uh, you missed out on a good show last week. I'm sorry. You were you weren't here for that interview. I just did. The, yeah. Well, I was I was busy. Miss Donovan. He's a good guy. Uh, Don't worry. I'm sure he is. He, I believe. He, he. Yeah. He's he, he'll be coming in now for for doing. He's going to be doing more of those segments. It's going to be a good time. I'm excited for it. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun now, Josh. Let's talk about some local news. Let's why get don't some we? local news. Now, this is kind of national news, but it, it happens in Pennsylvania. It was just recently Groundhog Day over the weekend. Pennsylvania's first most famous groundhog. The first most famous. He's not that that second famous guy, not the lottery guy. I don't like it's him. old Punk Zatani Phil. Phil, he said that uh he said the spring's coming early yeah, this he year. He crawled on out of that hole, he looked down, he saw that shadow. Or something. Did he I, see no, that? Uh, Wait, I, I think it's when he doesn't see I don't know how it works. I don't, I don't know how Groundhog Day works, but he did something, and now it's spring soon. Yeah, I think I think it's when they come out of the hole. If uh, if they if he sees a shadow, uh, he gets spooked, and that means winter, winter is staying. We, we're going to stay cold, but if he doesn't see a shadow, spring is on the way. Now, how, how can we believe this groundhog, but people aren't believing in climate change? <laughs> I, I don't get it's it. It's a controversial topic. <laughs> it is, but like... <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's fair. How could people trust this rodent over science? I trust both. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I trust the groundhog. Does, does science back up the groundhog? I don't believe science backs up the groundhog. I believe it is superstition that backs up the groundhog. Uh, I, uh, so I believe him, though. I, I believe Phil. I, yeah, I believe Phil. Now, Josh, moving on to some good old Berks County news. The Ole Valley School District just settled a lawsuit with three former high school uh, students over a defamation lawsuit. Kind of crazy. I don't, I don't ever remember any defamation lawsuits in my high school. Yeah, there, were, there was other stuff going on, but no defamation. No defamation. Yeah, so with this uh the students they were they were drama kids there was three uh, drama kids and they alleged that during the uh during the play their uh the play's director uh that, that they spoke out against her because uh, she was she was causing issues and two of the students were suspended and then during one of the cast parties the play director kicked out one of the other student that was suing um, and then after the play was over, after they had rapped and everything, she did, she just kicked them out of their, uh, their rap party. Wow. To, when they're, when they're all celebrating, wow, it's finally over. We, we put in all this, this hard work. They, they made a, a wonderful production of... Of newsies, I, new, I I don't know what that is. Yeah, but they did it wonderfully, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I have and only been to a few plays in my entire life. One of them was Shrek. One of them was Shrek. That was that was our high school's that play. Was, uh, yeah. And you know what? It did not cause defamation loss. But you know what? They're walking out of this with five thousand extra dollars in their pockets. They are, and that's impressive. And they're getting their attorney fees covered. They so are. good for the kids. Good I'm for glad. them. I'm glad that justice was served. Not uh, so great for uh, for the old Ole school district. Yeah, not so great. But it's good that the those students the, they were protected. You know, uh, high school high school's a not not a great time for everyone. Not, not a time where you have many personal rights. Yeah, yeah, definitely a time where all of your personal rights are stripped away from you when, yeah. when you enter the confines of your high school's walls. Yeah, so it's good there was a, a a win for the students there. Yeah, big win for the students. Awesome, awesome stuff. Now th this one's this one's a weird article, uh, de definitely a, one that caught my eye and thought we could talk about. And certainly local. Certainly local. Marijuana possession arrests drop in Pennsylvania as a whole, but they rise in Berks County. That's now, right. And they they dropped by quite a significant amount in the state of Pennsylvania. They oh, dropped they did. by a whole sixteen point five percent. Yeah, that's four thousand uh, arrests they dropped by. Yeah, that's a whole four thousand people stayed clean this year. Yeah. And on the other hand, 
Berks County had an increase of 38% with uh, arrests to from marijuana possession going from 471 to 651. Yeah, that's that is roughly not quite, but roughly a hundred more. That that's, is that is not 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 a hundred. It's more than a hundred. <laughs> it's roughly two hundred more. It, it's all right. I, I didn't. I would, the requirements to host this show absolutely never said you had to be wor- versed in math. I am not versed in math. No, that's fair. But that this is this is again. This is a bizarre article. I. It, it, the article that uh, the articles that we're reading from don't really uh, give any sight. Like, there's no real um, questions or answers about why yeah, this is I going mean, on. It, it, it vaguely, it, they give a vague answer that uh, a lot of cities are changing to decriminalization as opposed to uh, criminalization. I suppose, mm-hmm. um, and Berks County is not one of the counties that has cities doing that. Okay. So I, I suppose that could be a res- like this could be a result that, say, Philadelphia decriminalized marijuana, and so arrests naturally dropped in Philadelphia. But like I think Allentown's in is it Allentown or Reading that's in Berks County? I don't know. Geography Reading. Either. Reading is yeah. the county seat of Berks now, County. No, Reading is not decriminalized. I don't think. I do. I do not believe so. I feel so, like we would have heard that if yeah. we were. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh that could that could have a an effect there. Uh, yeah, it's it certainly could. Um, but I do, I am aware that Berks County does have the ARD program, that diversion program that uh that's meant for younger offenders, uh, so they don't have to, uh, you know, go through the like actually be charged with a you yeah. know a, a crime at such a young age. And I, I would, I would imagine that is probably, you know, helping, not as much as decriminalization may, but, you know, you can't always get what you want. The, the, the wheel of democracy and law changing is slow. That's right. It is certainly slow. It is not a speedy wheel. <laughs> yep. Now, uh, another thing that we wanted to talk about, which, which, this one's also pretty interesting. Under a new PA budget plan proposed by our governor, Tom Wolf, full day kindergarten would be required at all public schools. Now, if, uh, if you weren't aware, bo- I, uh, most, uh, kindergartens, uh, that I'm aware of have half day kindergarten you you either have an a.m. or a p.m. class that's right was your kindergarten like that josh i went to kindergarten in new jersey but yes i was a half day yeah i i, I was in the old a.m. i had the old, I, I had the old p.m. i was hanging out in the p.m. oh okay now uh this is it, this is interesting because on on one hand it, it does make sense uh there there's a lot of parents that uh you know they they've probably taken off for work for a few years to like stay home raise the kid maybe yeah and uh, they even when they get to the age of six when they're five six when they're going to kindergarten they uh they still have only a half a day that they're actually there right and you still have to find a time something to do there and also they're not getting they're just getting a half of a day of academic enrichment you could say absolutely even though i think at six you could probably handle a full day of i school. could handle a full day at six i think if i went back in time right now and i was six years old i could handle it mm-hmm. did you have nap time in your kindergarten i did not yeah i didn't either I, i've heard of that like people having nap time in kindergarten i was like what yeah i i i have Insane. heard of that but like in like tv i've never like heard of someone actually yeah having, having nap to- yeah that's true what what are your thoughts on this though, Josh? What, what? I I mean I I don't have I've I have not thought about kindergarten since I was there, mm-hmm. uh, but I would say I would say like you said for parents to not have to be and not have to take time off work because their kids are home uh, and and have their kids in all day I'd say it's beneficial. Yeah, I also agree. I th- I think full day kindergarten definitely makes sense, and I I don't remember. If it was a jarring transition, really, like going from kindergarten to first grade, like having to do the whole full time school thing, I thought it was I thought it was pretty strange going into school in the morning when I got to first grade. Oh yeah, kindergarten. like going to school, like the like for for before that I was going at like I want to say like noon, and then going in at like eight. That was a a, v- a vast difference, I'd say. So I I I don't know. I feel like 
I feel like there is a degree of transition that I, I think that some kids uh, would uh, can't really handle mm -hmm. when going to uh, between kindergarten and first grade. So I think that that's another benefit there. I agree. I, I, I can agree with you. Uh, another part of this that I mentioned that this was also in a proposed budget plan coming from the governor. This uh, new budget plan is looking for an authorization of another 2.6 billion in new spending, or 7.6 more than was there before. And naturally, as you can imagine, with uh, the me mentioning the full day kindergarten, us talking about it, uh, a, a lot of funding is being put into public schools, and. Uh, one of the requirements for that funding is that they have to have free full-time kindergarten and you know I, I also I can agree with Josh I think I think full-time kindergarten is a good thing but whether or not it's a good thing you, you can talk amongst yourselves about that at home but That's it's right. about time we go to a break so when we come back we'll have a little bit more local news and then we're gonna transfer into some good old national news what's going on in the great nation of the us of a thank you so much for listening make sure you stay tuned you're listening to the radio voice of cutstown university kur You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Welcome back to Kutztown Live. I'm your host, DJ Aaron B., joined always by my co-host. That's me, Josh. That's you, Josh. Now, Josh, we are continuing with our local news bender. We ha this, is, this is actually some pretty bad news. This, this is, is some terrible news. This is, this is terrible, terrible news. Terrible news that hits home. A poor a Kutztown University graduate, Elizabeth Heckman, has been teaching for about six months in Wuhan, China. She's been teaching English there. And as you may know, there there's a virus that has that, that that's gotten a, a little bit of press lately. Yeah, I think it, I think we have that set for discussion we, in the uh, We can talk about about that as a whole a little bit later, but yeah. you know, as as most of you know, there is uh, the Wuhan coronavirus that uh, everyone is freaking out about. And there is a Kutztown University graduate in Berks County resident, Elizabeth Heckman. She is over in China teaching in Wuhan, the city where the uh, coronavirus has originated. Now, if you haven't heard, there's been a lot of uh, travel bans, like airline bans, uh, are like going in and out of China. And so she's just kind of stuck there uh, as of right now. She's, she's working with other Americans who are in China right now with the U.S. Embassy to try to get back home. But I could not imagine how, how scary that is. Yeah, like, like she said in, in an interview with 69 News over Skype, that at the, at the grocery stores, clerks are taking your temperature, and if you have a fever, you can't go inside. I just can't imagine that. That is, that's crazy. Yeah, that, that's wild. Like, to have someone at the door take your temperature before you walk into the grocery store, that, that is something. But yeah, now she is trapped in China due to the, the virus and the travel bans involving United States and China. And she's, she's waiting for word from the U.S. Embassy about getting a flight out, but... That could take a while. It could take a while. Now, uh, the, the family has set up a GoFundMe page to help her pay for a plane ticket back home, as she was not expecting to make a sudden trip home uh, like this. So yeah. if you're interested, um, make sure you look into the Heckman uh, plane ticket fund. Uh, look, uh, look up her name on GoFundMe. Yeah, yeah. The the uh, the GoFundMe. It's actually almost at its goal. The goal's three thousand dollars, and it's at two thousand six hundred ninety-five dollars. But if you're interested in donating to help her get out, uh, the GoFundMe uh, page is just titled Elizabeth Heckman, um, and her father it looks like is organizing that. Very nice. Well, yes. Make sure you you make sure if you if you have the means, help out a, a fellow Berks County resident. Or if you're a student here, a fellow Kutztown, a Kutztown University alumni, someone who put in their time here. <laughs> now, I, and mentioning that she can't get home because of those uh, flight bans, I, I heard that the uh, wealth, uh, World Health Organization is actually 
They've called those unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah, they're 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 uh there there's a uh this this virus uh is being being amped up like the swine flu was and I know I know there's the they're bad viruses and all. This one the death rate is three percent. So it's not as bad as the news is making it seem. Mm-hmm. The news is making it seem like this is the end of the world. Uh, it's it, it's it's of course not not optimal, but it it it's probably going to get resolved. Yeah, probably. Now moving on to another th- this this is this is another thing that just caught my eye. Uh, it's something smokers. Uh, Smokers in the state of Pennsylvania can still smoke in almost 2,000 bars and clubs. Now, Pennsylvania is one of the only states that has this this exemption to that bars and clubs can have where they can have um, smoking in, on the premises that that, uh, that goes against the two, uh, 2008 Clean Air Act. Um, it, it, it's a it's a weird loophole, and uh, and lawmakers in the state of Pennsylvania are trying to uh, trying to stamp it out. They they want all they want all the businesses to have clean air. Yeah. But this is weird. I, I'm surprised this is something that's uh, gone on for so long. I I didn't know there was literally anywhere. Yeah, I thought you, you could, could only s- like I know I know uh, in Vegas the casinos you could smoke in there, but I did not know Pennsylvania had anywhere. They yeah, I, I really thought we were uh, definitely a, a state that that stamps out this kind of stuff. Oh, I'm looking at their their map right now, and it looks like cigar bars are included in that um, that uh, classification there, and mm. that that I I was well that makes of. sense. Yeah, I, I didn't know that that was even <laughs> that would even be included in this statistic. Yeah. But it, it's 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 weird at all, at all that uh you. Uh, Part of the the qualification to be exempt for this is that you need to twenty percent of your revenue cannot be from uh, over twenty percent of your revenue cannot be from the sale of foods, but that 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 just means like a a, a rest a bar restaurant can still sell or can still allow you to smoke in there, and I never experienced it as I was too young, but I I can imagine it was terrible in the in the eighties, nineties, two thousands, just going into a restaurant and just just having cigarette smoke just everywhere yeah. while you were trying to eat. I I can't imagine it was a good time. So, hope you know maybe uh, maybe this legislation will get passed through. The loophole will be filled because Pennsylvania actually got a D. From the National Lung Association about for uh, air quality when it comes to cigarettes, so we we got to get that D rating up. Uh, we we got to have clean air, Pennsylvania. Got to pump that up, PA. Yeah, we we love the clean air. I'm a we big do. I'm a big clean air guy. I myself I love to breathe. It's I, a part I, of what I do best. I'd say it's something that I'm proud of. Well, that's nice. I, I'm proud of you for breathing. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Now. Uh, another another thing that uh, that ha- that is happening around here, PA hunters set new record for number of black bears killed last year. That's something I've never even like never even thought about <laughs> is how many black bears are getting killed in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I uh, they uh, Pennsylvania hunters killed four thousand six hundred and fifty three hunters. Or fifty three back bears. Black, they didn't kill any of the yeah, no. hunters are fine. Yeah, Dick Cheney okay. was not out there. Yeah, <laughs> every everyone's fine. Um, wow, the <laughs> last year's total was uh, just a little bit over three thousand. <laughs> wow, and uh, they 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 got over fourteen hundred more black bears. Wow, that's very impressive. Oh, they almost they almost broke the record this year for uh, heaviest bear killed in Monroe County this year. They killed an eight hundred thirteen pound black 813 bear. Eight hundred thirteen pounds. The the highest the record is uh, in Pike County, eight hundred seventy five pounds. So if anyone is is looking to to uh, break a record, eight hundred seventy five pounds is the number to beat. <laughs> there, the J- Josh told you make. Get out there! Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know if. Uh, but do, we, do we want bears hunted? I don't know. Like, I'm not sure. I know we certainly want deer hunted. Yeah, they yeah. they are a pestilence. It cost me thirty three hundred dollars on my car. Yeah. They they are a menace. They and are. It is our fault that they're a menace. We did kind of kill their natural predators. 
We did. And, but, and we're destroying their habitat, so the road is the place for them to be. Yeah, that is true. But, <laughs> the, this is what we have, and this is what we're working with. Yeah. So, you know, hunters, well, let's set a new record for those deer. Yeah. And they're they're everywhere. I can't imagine it, it's hard to find them. This is a call to action. The, this is a call to action now. This is no longer just, just a radio show. I am calling you to action. Get out of your chairs. Get out there. But... I go to I go from a call to action to a call to a break. Oh my! It, it's time for a break. That is quite the turn. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I had to do it. Make sure you stay tuned for some more news. We're going to be moving on to some national news when we come back. You're listening to the Radio Voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by FeedThePig.org. Well, I finally did it. I opened a 401k. So you're giving up. Just like that. Giving up on what? On getting an inheritance from a distant relative. Don't you think if there were a billionaire in the family, we'd know about it by now? Listen to me. We are one phone call away from riding horses on our own private polo grounds. One call from christening yachts, having a butler using summer as a verb. How do you figure? Look, everyone's got a rich uncle somewhere. It's statistics. So the best thing you can do is just prepare for the inevitable. Right. Which is why I thought maybe it would be smart to take control of my finances. You know, start using a budget, get out of debt, set some retirement goals. Budgets? Debt? You watch your mouth. Retirement shouldn't be a goal for us. It should be a way of life. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. This is Foreign Languages Made Easy. Speaking and understanding teenager. Phrase one. There were stacks of heads chiseling in the heezy. Translation. There were many people relaxing in the house. Phrase two. His whip is a janky hoopty. Translation. His automobile is less than desirable. You may not understand your kids, but they understand you. Talk to them about drugs. Need help? Get help. Visit drugfree.org. Partnership for a drug-free America and drug-free Pennsylvania. Charles Charles the Carpet King will carpet your entire house for only $39. That's right, your entire house for only $39. But don't expect Charles the Carpet King to do it himself because Charles the Carpet King passed away last week at 47 from the same disease that got his father, so he won't be around for his family. And sadly, it could have been detected early with a simple test, but Charles didn't get it. Have you gotten the medical test you need? For a list of tests every man should have, go to ahrq.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Welcome back to Undeclared with me, DJ Aaron B. And did I say Undeclared? Oh, you did. Wow, this that's is not the show. Now. This is a disaster. This is a disa- I'm still in shock from that previous... PSA though. Yeah, I, I am. That, I that really was know terrible. What that was I? The the show is now earlier in the week though, so I can blame it on that. Like when I mess up now, if I if I do something stupid, I was like, oh, I got a case of the Tuesdays. We'll you know? see what happens. We'll we'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> um. Now, Josh, uh, we we got some unfortunate news for the listeners that uh, uh, you you you're busy this semester. I am busy this semester. So you're so gonna, gonna be leaving in the five show's... minutes. I'm gonna get up. You're gonna hear that door shut. And you're not gonna hear from me again. <laughs> that that's true. Unfortunately, uh, the the way schedules worked out this year, uh, Josh will not be able to be here for the entirety of the show. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm actually gonna be um, walking into my class just in time. Yeah, he's gonna be just running out of here to go to class. So appreciate his hustle. And appreciate my hustle. Yeah, I'm 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 making making moves. I had a class right before this too. I am I am just busy from nine thirty to five. I also have class before this. It's a nightmare. It is. But we still got news. You're not off the hook yet. You still got like four minutes of news to talk about. So That's that right. Super Bowl happened on Sunday. It sure did. <laughs> did you watch it? I did watch it. I watched it here at the Kutztown University of Pennsylvania. Yeah, I did not. I watched it in Levittown, Pennsylvania. I hung out with Jared and we watched the Super Bowl, and the Chiefs won. It was yeah, the the Chiefs certainly won, and that means Andy Reid won, uh, which means this is a very slight victory for the city of Philadelphia. Very small, very but very yeah. small, but a victory nonetheless. I take what I can get. 
Good job, Andy Reid. Good job, Chiefs. I did not watch the halftime show, it but I heard it was good. good. It wasn't good. I, everyone I heard said it's like the best halftime show in like the past ten years. I just think it was better than last year's. Oh, but last year's, last year's was a nightmare. Last year's was truly terrible. Uh, but but uh, this year's was I, I guess it was all right. But I, I wasn't I, I I wasn't too into it. I was busy. Um, but uh, I know we got we got a we got Mr. Peanut back. Oh, That's kind of yeah. cool. After we lost him, the, those, the Super Bowl commercials keep getting worse. Yeah, they're, they're, they just need to they need to stay funny. That this year they did the good job of making most of them like at least like try to be funny though. They had the Bud Knight and the Tide ads. I didn't get oh, that. Oh come on, uh, the the ones with the Charlie Day were probably yeah they the best they were ones. good, but I don't know why the Bud Knight was in the Tide ads. They were the brand crossovers, but they didn't even advertise Bud Light. That's true. Brand crossovers though. Uh yeah, uh, the commercials uh, get better. Come on. Yeah. But I, Josh, we need we before you leave, we need to we need to talk about the the moves, the news that's most important to me. Gritty. Gritty has been absolved. He has not committed a crime. If you if you dear listener haven't heard, the Flyers mascot Gritty was accused a few weeks ago of assaulting a child. Actually, actually, the father's child claimed that during a photo shoot. Uh, with the fly, uh, Flyers annual pass holder photo shoot that Gritty just stood up and just punched his son. Just, uh, uh, I, <laughs> I, I, like, I, I don't know where this accusation's coming from because I wouldn't mess with Gritty. Yeah, I, I, it's good that we can laugh about it now because it has been proven that Gritty just didn't do it. The, yeah. the guy lied, but his accusation was that Gritty, st- not that he stood up and punched his son, Stood up and ran full speed at him, and then punched his son. I just I don't know why. Like but, why would you lie about this? I don't know. Uh, he he still but he still says that it happened, and the, the but he respects the police investigation that he was he's innocent. Gritty is safe. Gr- Gritty's safe, and that's what matters. That I, is what I'm I'm very happy that Gritty's been absolved. He's he's just a he's a, he's a fun guy. He's a national treasure. He's literally a national treasure. He's he's one of the few things the city of Philadelphia has that's yeah. good yeah. To, right now. And he's and he's not even good. He's great. He is. He's he's big and orange, and I don't really know what he is, but he's great. He he's a monster. He came out of the Wells Fargo Center. <laughs> Haven't we all? But Josh, it's about time you head out. So it that is. means uh, I'm gonna head to a break to prepare myself. I want the listeners so, to hear the door shut. Oh, okay. It, Josh, it's been very nice having you today, and we're going to again throw it to a break real quick while I get the show set up without my dear co-host. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. We'll see you right after the break. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Welcome back to Kutztown Live. I'm your host, as always, DJ Aaron. Be joined by a new co-host. DJ Jackal, of course. That, that's right. I, I replaced Josh. I replaced him that quick. Aren't you impressed? I'm pretty impressed with uh, how quickly I got over here and you told me to come over here. I know. I, I'm an impressive guy. I, I got a, I got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, you know, I, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm able to just grab people on the fly on, on the fly. I mean, speaking of stuff going on, Monday block that just happened. That did just happen, but we still got some news to cover. I still got some stuff written down that I need to get covered real quick. the The Iowa caucus right now, which happened yesterday, is just a nightmare. There's a lot of stuff going on with that. Now, if if it, it is currently almost 3 p.m. on Monday, eh, or on Tuesday, it is Tuesday. And we do not have the results of the Iowa caucus yet. We do not know which Democratic candidate won yet. And this is, uh, this is apparently due to a app on uh, the smartphones that uh, each caucus station was using to, uh, to tally the votes. It apparently malfunctioned, and uh, yeah, now, now the votes just aren't getting out. And that's, uh, that, that's an issue, because we, we're, 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 you know pretty deep into the next day and we we still don't know who won it's like uh it's like that 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 uh was it the 2004 election 2000 uh, even with florida 2000 yeah that that was a mess and the, this is a, a much smaller mess but it's still a mess yeah i mean it shows that like we can't do voting by apps like a lot of people have put it forward because uh 
you know, down don't uh, down uh, poles in the past, but I don't really think that it's going to work out, especially in this instance that they showed that it failed. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it, electronic voting has definitely been a topic for for many years now, and it always proves to be a dumb idea. Yeah. And I mean, I gotta say, uh, c considering I did go out and vote with you last year in, uh, in, <laughs> in those elections, I do have to say that uh, going and actually physically voting really makes you feel uh, happy about, you know... You feel a part of the well-oiled democratic machine. Yeah, doing what you can, being a part of that blue wave. Yeah. <laughs> did you just talk politics on this show? That wasn't intentional. You're not allowed to do that. Well, I'm new here. <clears throat> Well, Jake, we we got some other stuff to talk about. Now, the the state of the union is indeed tonight. Now, if you care about that kind of stuff, I don't think I've ever watched the state of the union in my entire life. Well, I'm a little interested to see what uh old Donnie J has to say. <laughs> yeah, well, it's definitely I I've never really seen it as so, something like interesting. Like I I feel like Hey, you're never. Well, why? Why would you listen to to the to the guy who want wants to make it seem like everything's going well? Uh, uh, hear him lie about how things are going well, and that that doesn't just go for like current president. That go, that goes all of them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our our country is always usually uh, in some sort of issue. Yeah, so, there, there's always issues going on, and the State of the Union's just always like a, hey guys, everything's great, fantastic, doing well. Well, I mean, thumbs up. It, it is good for the uh, the country to try to at least remain positive in times of trouble, so uh, hopefully he has some good things to say tonight. I'll definitely be watching as we do live together. That That's certainly true. Now, uh, Jake, I, I don't know if you've heard about the, um, you've, you've obviously, or... Have you heard of uh, all, that, all that 5G nonsense that's going on? Oh, absolutely. The 5G development. Now, if you're if you haven't heard of the topic, uh, 5G, it's it's the it's the next big thing. That's it's a, it's, huge. We're we're gonna get faster speeds. Uh, everything's gonna be so fast, going going fast. But uh, we we need someone to develop it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, actually, there. If you'd like me to go into detail a little bit on this, yeah, I'm pretty please. knowledgeable on the topic. So, what uh, companies like Verizon are using for their 5G technology is what's known as millimeter wave. Which is like, it's very similar to uh, cell towers and stuff like that, but they mm. they give you significantly higher speeds. However, they're very short range. So uh, when companies like um, T-Mobile come out and say they've covered the entire nation in 5G, it is not 5G speeds. Yeah. They're, they're, it's basically uh, 4G LTE slightly faster. Mm. Now the main problem I've seen with 5G lately, and the one that I wanted to talk about was the Chinese company Huawei. <laughs> is one of the like leading companies on 5G development and they're they're a Chinese company with ties to the Chinese government and that that throws a lot of red flags for people oh absolutely uh, usually and so with them uh, and I saw them that they were in talks with the UK government on uh, bringing 5G to to the entirety of the United Kingdom I also saw that and uh, that that was causing issues over there on a policy discussion uh, about that national security all that jazz and now in the US naturally as uh, as we get very scared of stuff very fast especially uh, when uh, especially when it's named Huawei yeah, we're not a fan we, of that company we, if you did not know you cannot buy Huawei products in this country ever yeah. since yeah for a while and um it, yeah so the US currently uh, we we have we are sending it, we are telling our private companies get out there and develop go 5G you need to do it for the for the good of this nation now so now Verizon appears to be leading the pack in a 5G development and uh, if, if you don't know another thing about Verizon that I want to talk about you, you see their Super Bowl commercial Jake I, uh, I actually don't remember it but I probably did see it it, it wasn't a funny one it was yeah, a, that's it why was I don't a, remember it <laughs> yeah it was about how uh, the, they're the they're the network for heroes for firefighters and stuff and I gotta say this really quick because we're almost out of time but uh, if you remember last year during the California wildfires, actually Verizon was throttling the speeds of firefighters who were out there fighting the fires. Well, it doesn't surprise me. You got to make money and they find uh, corners to cut. But that's just very unethical. <laughs> yeah, it was very unethical. And, I, and I, I saw that Super Bowl ad and I was just almost genuinely offended. So, uh, so I just wanted to throw that in at the end of the show. Yeah. But 
like I said, it is the end of the show. So thank you, everyone, so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Kutztown Live, and I hope to see you next week. Make sure you tune in to the good old Monday block on Monday, starting at 5 with me always starting it off and being at the show at 6. So you're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. I'll see you next week. <laughs>